Shalom family and welcome to Into All Truth. I pray that this message glorify Yahuwah, our Abba Yah, and that the Ruach Kodesh would lead you into all truth, that the Ruach Kodesh would give you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge, and that the words that I speak in this message would find fertile ground in your heart and spirit and bring forth fruit in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. So family, may the Ruach HaKodesh of truth who has come guide you into all truth and show you things to come. Hi, Mishpaka. This is just to add, help um, give the unbelieving relatives some evidence about who true Israel is. And <laughs> there's some videos in here, a video at the end that I got like several weeks ago, but I just never thought to post it because I was like, duh, everybody knows. But then I've seen other people posting it. So now I'm posting it just as a resource for people to send to their family members of Israel who still don't know who we are. So here it is for you. May Yah bless you. Amen. So here's to me missing the obvious. Hitler was, you know, and the Nazis, of course, expanded on Margaret Sanger's approach to eugenics, right? Eugenics was a movement that was born in the United States under a hard doctrines of racism with the intent of eliminating the tribe of Judah in, uh, in the African-American community in this country, right? To eliminate them. That's why she formed Planned Parenthood, was specifically to kill African-American, uh, you know, black Americans. That's why she did it with the intent of eliminating the tribe of Judah in, uh, in the African-American community in this country, right? To eliminate them. With the intent of eliminating the tribe of Judah in, uh, in the African-American community in this country, right? To eliminate them. That And I'd like to now bring up another interesting place that you're finding descendants of the Israelites, but may not necessarily be from the Ten Tribes, but will also play a role. And it shouldn't be overlooked. It's a very serious scenario. It's, it's in Africa. Africa has perhaps hundreds of millions of people with this identity right now of being from the people of Israel. Does that mean they were from the Ten Tribes? Likely not. We were taught by the historians and within our own traditions that when the Romans conquered Judea a few hundred years after that the tribes of Israel went into exile, perhaps millions of Judeans were sold into slavery, into Africa, into Rome, deep into Africa. And if you look now, you're seeing people who are most likely the descendants of those slaves who kept true. I'd like to bring up a few specific examples because they're going to be game changers. One of them wrote letters to Israel when it became a state. And they said, we're, uh, we're Israelites out in Africa. You know, everyone laughed at them and they said, African Israelites, these people are just trying to jump on the first world country bandwagon. They're living in a third world country, they got nothing. We're coming to Israel, we got innovation, technology. So they're trying to get on this train because there's such a thing called the right of return. All descendants of the Jewish people from around the world are able to move to Israel. So they, they said, we are also. And everyone kind of laughed at them, like I said. And a few people took it serious and went out there and started studying them, learned about their culture. And a professor from Duke University went out there and did DNA testing on them. And he showed not only do they share Semitic genes from people who were in Yemen and back to the Middle East, these gentlemen, a large percent of them, have the Y chromosome to be Kohanim, to be priests. Now, if anyone who doesn't know, a priest is a specific family clan of the nation of Israel who come from Aaron, the brother of Moses, who was the first priest. And anyone descended from Aaron is, has the, the, the status title priest. And we found that these men in this village in South Africa called Lemba, L-E-M-B-A, carry this genetic marker to let us know that they share the same as from the Svartic and the Ashkenaz and 
and the population of the people in Israel today, they share the same exact DNA marker. That's mind-blowing. So everyone kind of got humbled a little bit, who, who laughed at them and said, now, now, now what? Now what do we do about this? This could have tremendous implications. Another area in Africa you have uh, something big happening is in Nigeria. You have the Igbo people, or Igbo, pronounced either way. There's 40 million of them, also Christians, like I spoke about before, how that could happen to the children of Israel very easily. But also a lot of them are now coming out and converting back or adopting the, the rules of the Torah without all the paganism that they've been practicing for hundreds of years. There's been books written about it from scholars in Nigeria, from scholars from the Jewish people. And where it gets interesting is, in America, there was a slave trade. And a lot of the slaves, a very high percentage of them, came from Western Nigerian ports. And in America today, you see a, a very large movement of African Americans who say that they're the real chosen people, that they're the children of Israel, they're the Judeans. You know, so what, are they just trying to create a, an identity for themselves because they were slaves? Or is there really something here? And the answer is, most likely there is something there. And most likely, maybe that they were the original Israelites. And maybe that the Jewish people today who are white Caucasian people um, came in a little bit later on. We know that some of the greatest sages of the transmission of the Torah were converts from Rome. You have a man named Uncleus who, who wrote a commentary on the Torah, unprecedented, that we still learn today. He was a convert. Some of the largest pillars on the transmission today were Roman converts. So here we are, we're, you know, I'm speaking, we're ca Caucasian Jewish people. And now you have people in Africa saying that they're the real people of Israel. It can't be ruled out at all. We know they were sold into slavery. We know now that they're fulfilling prophecies by saying, Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshippers, the daughters, my dispersed ones. That's the queen of Sheba and her sons migrated and dispersed to Ethiopia. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 2. The precious sons of Zion are comparable to fine gold. Verse 8, their visage is blacker than coal. And the concise Oxford English Dictionary, the 10th edition, tells us that visage is a poetic literary of a person's face with reference to the form of their features. A person's facial expression is what? Blacker than coal. You start to connect the language and you start to see. Look what it says in Bereshit chapter 9 verse 27. It actually tells you that Yahweh, who is omnipotent, it is his will because he has actually deceived them into doing this. They are so deceived into doing this. Look at Genesis 9 20, 27. Elohim will entice and deceive. The Hebrew word there is patah. Patah. He will deceive Japheth. Ashkenaz, the sons of Japheth, and he will dwell, that means Ashkenaz will dwell in the tents of the Shemites. Is that what's happening today? Has he deceived the Ashkenazi so much, those from the Russian steppes, the Caucasians, he's deceived them so much that they're actually dwelling in the place where the real Shemite should dwell? Genesis 9 verse 27 you see, Yahweh is the one that has deceived. He has enticed Japheth. Patah, deceived, enticed. He's de deceived and enticed the Ashkenazi Jews into believing that they're the Jews. And they've built the Zionist state of Israel today, which is occupying what? A whole political platform. You don't know where the money is coming for Hillary Clinton? Where do you think it's coming from the Ashkenazi slavers? 
That's where the, all this political money is coming from. And you don't think it, it, it pay, it, it's important for us to know this right before the elections, what's going on. Because they're going to try and enslave people even more. And we have to be aware of it. Because what's happened is the Ashkenazi are in fact occupying the, tons, the tents, excuse me, the tents of Shem, the real Shemites. Shem's not there. It's the Zionist occupiers that are there. Look at Job chapter 12, verse 18. The deceived and the deceiver are Yahuwah's. Because some people are going to get all upset because you said, well, Yahuwah deceived. He wouldn't deceive. Well, the scripture tells us that he does. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. Yahuwah, you deceived me, and I was deceived. Because there's a riddle, right? And we all know the riddle. I love the riddle. I love to do the riddle on my children. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweet. Right? What is sweeter than honey, and what's stronger than a lion? And we know this from Shimshon, Samson, and Delilah. And she got hold of the riddle, did she not? Deceitfully. And Delilah made Shimshon Samson sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks off his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. You see, Samson was the first Rasta. He was a Negro lion fighter. Similar to the African Maasai tribe. Judges 14.5 and 16.19. You see, Samson tore a lion apart as he would a young goat. And as a Nazarite, he wore seven dreadlocks. He was mahogany in body color, just like Malcolm X. And his visage was blacker than coal. He was a Negro. Lamentations 4, 7, and 8. And this is really hard for people to see in Scripture. Lamentations 5.10, our skin was black like an oven. Job 30 verse 30, my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68, and Yahweh shall bring you into Mitzrayim, Egypt again with ships. And the way of which I said to you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold to your enemies for slaves and female slaves, and no man shall buy you. And that is what happened to the regal class of the house of Judah. And I want to give you a brief history. I won't go into it too much, but I can't just make that statement because there'll be people that will push back. But I want to give you a brief history on slavery. <laughs> I was just amazed, i got to tell you. I mean, when you come to America and you talk to people about slavery, you can, you, you, talk, you can talk to black people about slavery, white people about slavery, and, and they'll, they'll give you all this history on slavery, and it only goes back to the 16th and the 17th century. And you're like, don't they teach you the history of slavery? Why? Ask the bloody question. Why are they only teaching you the history of slavery as far back as the 16th and the 17th century? Why are they only going that far back? Because they don't want you to go farther back than that. Because then you'll actually find out the truth. But from the 16th and 17th century, we'll teach you about slavery. You've got to go further back, and you've got to understand and, and question, why do they do this without, throughout the whole of America, in all the public schools? Why do they only go back as far as the 16th and the 17th century to talk about slavery? We've got to go further back than that. Because Islam, Islam designed infernal slavery. And this is from the Ashkenazi Jew. Uh, he's a scholar, Jonathan Shoresh, and he says this. Jewish merchants routinely possessed enormous numbers of slaves temporarily before selling them off. 
If a slave auction fell on a Jewish holiday, it was postponed due to a lack of buyers and sellers. The Jews of Suriname gave their slave plantations Hebrew names, such as Machanaim, Nachamu, and Goshen. Rabbi Herbert Bloom adds that the Jew, that the slave trade was one of the most important Jewish activities. One of the most important Ashkenazi Jewish activities. In 1694, Jews owned 9,000 regal African nomadic Jews from the house of Judah. In 1694, they owned 9,000 enslaved from the house of Judah. Jewish slaving is confirmed in the Jewish encyclopedia. But you start talking about it, again, you're digging into historical truth, not sacred history. So why does the American black history exist solely for the past 400 years, beginning in the 17th century? And all you hear about is, well, the transatlantic slave trade. But there's so much more than the transatlantic slave trade. You've got to go further back. I want to quote to you from, from Babylon to Timbuktu. It's a book by Rudolf R. Windsor. This is page 84. Quote. Uh, that are inside of the wheelchairs and they aren't able to walk or rise up. After they've read the books, they've actually gotten up from their wheelchairs. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Starting to walk because it's a resurrection power. Yeah. Truth is resurrection power. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And they've come to the truth, and it's, and it's caused a resurrection power inside of them. Now, it's causing quite a stir inside um, the prison system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stockton has not had a shutdown, and now it has a shutdown for the last month because they're trying to figure out what's happening. Okay. Why are they standing up from their wheelchairs when there's no pastor, let's say, praying for them, right. or you know, all of that? So, anyway, resurrection power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Truth sets free. Yeah. And then, for the last 20 years, I've been taking the Hebrews to Negroes truth to Africa long before the Hebrews to Negroes. Uh, writings and um, it's, it's taken me far and wide all over Africa into uh, the king of Swaziland into the leaders of Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Congo, Nigeria, Tanzania, Ghana, uh, South Africa and um, again a resurrection power. Yeah. And I praise Yahweh that praise here you are. Yeah. I praise Yahweh for the awakening. Yeah. I praise Yahweh for the resurrection power. Praise. Hallelujah. I have been walking the walk as a lone voice crying in the wilderness. And when I came upon the writings, I cried like tears and tears and tears from yes. <laughs> the labor is not in vain. <laughs> yes, you are awakening. Yes, you're rising up. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, my dear brothers and sisters in Africa. It has been now almost 25 years that I've lived on this continent. And I promise you, I am the happiest African you have ever seen. I'm very thankful that God brought me to this continent. And I want to tell you that I may be more African than many Africans. Let me just tell you what I got in as a WhatsApp, and I fully agree with that person that wrote this. This person wrote, I would like to respond to those who say that in Africa, we will experience the worst more than Italy and Germany who will say that something happens without the Lord having ordered it? 
First, remember that it was in Africa that Abraham was enriched in Egypt. Second, Isaac visited Africa and was blessed. Third, it was in Africa that Jacob was richly blessed when famine struck the earth. Fourth, it was in Africa that Joseph became the father of Pharaoh, the prime minister. Five, it was in Africa that the 12 sons of Jacob were spared the plague that struck the earth. Six, it was in Africa that Moses was born and became great to liberate a whole people. Seven, it was in Africa that the people of Israel amassed wealth and went out with gold, silver, and precious stones to build the tabernacle. Eight, it was in Africa that our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took refuge to flee Herod. The only continent where he found refuge was in Africa. Nine, when Jesus had taken the way to the crucifixion, it was our African brother, Simon of Cyrene, who helped him to transport the cross. The African has touched the cross. He is entitled to the achievements of the cross. We carry in our body the marks of Jesus Christ. I rebel and say no to all the negative words against Africa in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have, we may not have the large hospitals that other continents have, but the African has a God called Jehovah Rapha. And I want to read to you in Psalm 91.1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Psalm 91.7. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. In Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness from your midst. Dear ones, Africa is the richest continent. Africa is the continent of life and light and resources and refuge. Dear ones, Africa is the continent that God is now moving up. And what I appreciate so about Africa, when you study the Africa, the, the, the history of Africa, so much pain, so much rejection, so much slavery, but the Africans did not get bitter, they got better. And with people like this, God can move, can work. Dear ones, I believe with all my heart, that we have a revival ahead of us that the world has never seen. And Uganda and the Africans will play a big role in bringing in the end time harvest into the kingdom of God. Come, rise up, Africa, wake up, wake up and rise up. Your time of redemption has come and God wants to set up this continent to be a blessing to the whole world. I love you. And I pray that many, many Africans will rise up, not in pride, but in godly fear and humility, which means I want to make God big and I want to respect the orders of God. And then you will have riches, honor, life. I promise you that is promised in the word of God. Shalom, shalom. But look at ancient Egypt hieroglyphics, and they are ruddy. The Egyptians have got ruddy black skin, mahogany skin, reddish black complexions. You see, one of King Solomon's sons was later taken to Ethiopia by the Queen of Sheba, whose son had descendants reigning in Ethiopia until when? Until the Ashkenazi, those who say they are Jews and are not, came in and dethroned Haile Selassie in 1974. And that's where we get the Rasta movement, of course, from Ethiopia. Because then, after they dethroned Haile Selassie, 
1974, then who did they bring in in 1984 to get rid of any of those connected back to biblical Israel? Of course, they bring in Sir Bob Geldof a decade later with his live aid migration moving of people for the Ashkenazi communists and moves everybody from the plateaus into the live aid feeding camps underneath Ashkenazi communist control. We already spoke about that earlier at Sukkot. 